Howdy YouTube, welcome to another video by me, I'm Nick and this is Harper Valentine Creative. Every week we do something a bit different, sometimes it's being out and about on a bike in London, sometimes it's focused on the dog, sometimes it's beer or doing recipes in the kitchen, and sometimes it's art, and sometimes it's books about art. This is... Uh, the History of Arts by H.W. Jensen. Um, it replay. it's... Actually, let's go back. This... <laughs> this is what's left of my History of Art um, book from when I was about 11. It was bought for me by one of my favourite aunts and it's a catalogue of everything that is and was art. I was always very fascinated by art and very into it and it's detailed catalogue of everything starting off in Babylonian and Greek and as you can tell it got well used unfortunately that also meant that it died um, just peeled a bit off given this this state and um, whatever I still love it and I still have it I don't need the cover and it does go right up to modern day Liechtenstein and Jackson Johns and Freud and and then a friend having seen that found this this is what it's supposed to look like this is pretty much a, an updated version of the same thing has pretty much everything that the other one had slightly better and a lot more colored pictures or a few black and white actually lovely book but I still like my favorite old one Ooh, let's put them down. They're very heavy. And that's pretty much it. That's what this is all about. I've always had a fascination with art and the history and how things have progressed and how people have started. You see pictures of like Mondoran's weird squares on a page thing and you think, we well, couldn't have started like that. And he didn't. He started with beautiful little landscapes. He got bored. So he started abstracting them and making lines and things and those squares and circles on a page are modern interpretations of a, a classic landscape. I wouldn't know that if I'd not read art books like that. But then somebody, I think the same aunt, my auntie Vi, really did fuel my love of art and art books. Um, unfortunately she's not here anymore. But she bought me the Impressionists. This is a beautiful book. Um, G. Graeber and J. F. Gilu wrote this and it is just huge plates of artwork describing who's in pictures and what they're about and, and all of the Impressionism beautiful paintings and it goes on and on and on and on. I particularly favoured Paul Cezanne, little less known but it does go on to Monet's water lilies and probably a lot of people don't know the reason the Monet's water lilies started off very detailed very precise and gradually he started to lose his eyesight and just painted what he saw so every time he painted and his eyesight got a little bit worse the picture got a little bit muddier and dirtier eventually he ended up with rather wishy-washy grey browny sludgy pictures but that's what he saw, so he painted it. It wasn't necessarily Impressionism, it was just realism seen through a person's eyes with cataracts. Again, things you learn. But they're my history of art, my reasons why I got into art and why I know stuff about the old stuff. And then I got a bit mm, about it. And then my mum bought me this, 
which you've probably seen before if you've watched videos where I've talked about my love of the randomness of evil fairies. Good, good fairies, bad fairies by Brian Froud, as signed by the man himself. This book totally inspired me. It created an idea, a worm in my head, maybe a little fairy sitting on my shoulder telling me things. It gave me ideas and it gave me an excuse to take photos of fairies. People dressed as fairies. Sometimes. Sometimes fairies. And then draw fairies, video fairies, and just get the stories of and incorporate them into my books and my writing and my art. And this is a beautiful, amazing book where you can see so many stories and so many random fairies and it opens your eyes to the idea and the possibility of the random little creatures. And this book does a weird thing halfway through. It turns upside down. And all the pictures are the other way up because they're the good fairies. But we all know fairies are evil. No fairies are pretty and cute. They're all just devious and spiteful and vicious in some way. And secondary bit of dust. This is another book by Brian Froud and also Alan Lee. Um, same sort of thing. Or just because uh, I've got the other book, I've got this one. But it still has some amazingly beautiful pictures in it um, but I just prefer the good fairies, bad fairies. So these things have all been just giving me inspiration and ideas and then I was never really a YouTube watcher and I never really knew to even look at YouTube for art purposes and then I was trying to work out how to draw digitally, can I say that word? And I stumbled across a guy that you now know very well, Jazza, um, used to be drawer with Jazza he created this. My artwork, the paintings, fine. Taking photos, fine. The people sometimes were a bit suspect. So I bought this and it was fascinating. I followed every single how-to and read it all cover to cover and learned a lot. Um, it definitely changed the way I draw. Subsequently, now I'm of the opinion I don't really like this very heavy outline but I think that was testament to this book as well until then I didn't really know what it was I did like in animation and anime and so forth but this was very good and this is highly recommended another book that came from Jazza was one of the books that he himself recommended and says that he learned a lot from so I bought it. Drawing Cutting Edge Comics by Christopher Hart. This again is a how-to and demonstration of amazing things and probably should go back to every now and then and dip in and just try things because I've learned a lot but there's still things in here that you can refresh yourself with. How to draw veins and extreme creatures and monsters and things are very useful. Another little random one. This is just a one-off. There are a lot of these. Drawing on digital art. Again, similar sort of thing, but this is quite good for a beginner's guide on how to set up and what equipment to use and what each tool does, etc. David Cousins. I'm going to keep it out and dip back into it. Now that I've got the iPad and I can do a lot more of these things, I'm going to have another look at this. Dust on my face from all the books. My fingers are filthy. Some of these books I haven't seen the light of day in years. That's pretty much like my how-to section. Then we come to this. I did a quick like that of this a few weeks, maybe months back, but never really went into it. I did a, a copy of free artist pit video, link up here, um, and one of them, and the one that really turned out well, was Ilya Kushinov. I can say his name. I got it, Kushinov. I always say Kushinikov. Ilya is a Russian artist, a name like that. You wouldn't think he was French, would you? But he lives in Japan and he's just done the Ghost in the Shell 2045 anime series, which is on Netflix. And he's also released this beautiful book of all of his art. It's, it's just literally pictures of anime, mostly female, and artwork and landscapes. And it's in Japanese and English. So good for practicing your own language skills on. But his artwork is a 
amazing. I think everybody, if you look at any artist on Instagram or art station, see who they're influenced by. This is the master of the 21st century. He, he just draws like this without even thinking. He sketches on the, on the train to work of a morning and his pictures are like, wow, he drew that on a moving train. Some of these are beautiful. Well, pretty much everything on here is beautiful. Even cats and dogs in a, in a suit. And art landscapes as well. It's not even like he, he only does one. I mean, seriously, that is just perfection. Yeah, you with me? I mean, seriously? Well, well, well worth this. It's called Eternal, Ilya Kushinov Illustration Works. Link in the description below. I'll try and find the links for most of these. Then slight departure, a very recent discovery. This literally came up on Instagram. Graffiti cookbook. I'm learning. This has taken me a while to read through. God's sake, the writing is tiny, but it's full of amazing artwork and if you notice recently with the cycling around London videos I have stopped quite a bit more and shown pictures of some of the pieces and the throw-ups and stuff learn see throw up get me with the jargon thank you whatever your name is I don't know who wrote this document press presents graffiti cookbook it doesn't say who it's by that's weird I hadn't noticed that but it has detailed it has interviews with people it's inspired me a lot it demonstrates how to draw a lot of art and graffiti now on the streets and things is designated areas if you watch my brick lane video link up there i'm not just pointing it's not up there some of those pieces go up and they are amazing and they'll last two days and someone will come along and roll her over the top of them some emulsion paint and it's gone for all time it's a weird art form and a fascinating art form and should be given a little bit more time obviously just tagging the side of the canal bridge is a bit if you can paint the whole canal bridge then it could be quite impressive yes graffiti cookbook making my way through this slowly probably videos to come i'll probably go back to brick lane or somewhere like that save the best till last i think i probably have this thing is my current baby asia ladowska um has written a book called Sketch with Asia. It's a biography, it's an autobiography really, of like her art and it shows you her early work and her realism stuff and her inspirations. And, and once again, beautiful, beautiful creatures. Anime girls that are just mesmerizing with huge eyes and pretty colors and in her case, amazing hair. But it does go into how to and what to and what not to do. I liked her, obviously I liked her because I bought her book, but She's a kindred spirit. That little section there. Copic markers. You know the these things? You pulled the mic out then. These things, Copic markers. It says, I forget to buy green pens when I go to the shops. Um, I could purchase them, but green is my least favorite color. And so I tend to not pick them up. She's like me and Mondran. Mondran hated green. I hate green. Asia hates green. So it's a necessity once in a while. Slight detail, sorry. Really, really detailed section on how to draw hair and then her process and how she draws hair, more hair, drawing hair, shading, mood. And she draws mostly traditionally on paper with pen, with copy, and then also does them um, digital, digitally. I used to be an, a photographer's assistant and I could never say that word either. I'm a photographer's assistant. Sound like I've done half a bottle of tequila. Horrible thought. So yeah, there we go. A new influence, a big influence um, in, since discovering her. It's called Sketch with Asia. I recommend all of them and I hope this was useful and helpful. My voice is getting really high. I um, hope you like this. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment down below, suggestions of other things to, to read or whatever. And of course, subscribe. It's free. It doesn't cost you anything. You just click the button, it does it. And then it will appear in your subscriptions timeline. Uh, if I post a video on a Sunday and you see it, you don't have to watch it. You just have to subscribe. Do me a favor, just click the subscribe button. Another word I can't say, subscribe. Subscribe to the digital assistant. Yes.
Well, I hope you like this. Thumbs up, leave a comment, hit subscribe, and come back next week for something completely different. Who knows what? You'll only find out by coming back next week. Until then, see you later. Bye. Have a job. Boom. Uh, um, that's clean out of it. I don't think you're going to be able to f get this. Although, if you find a copy and send it to me, I'll turn it into this. I can always... Asia... I can never say her name either. Ladowska. Da, 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 da. Trying to find the um, setup. But also David Bowie, he didn't like green. Also went to art school with him. I didn't go with him, I went to the same art school. Let's, let's clarify that. I went to the same art school as David Bowie, not at the same time. I mentioned that to someone the other day, that's the only reason I said it, but he didn't like green. Um, even though he had a green eye. That was 26 minutes.